obviously Dell balled as a rookie. Right. He had to catch and he right. balled, but it was that it was that New York perfect storm too. That's yeah. what I, I I say that all the time. If he made that catch in Cleveland, yeah. it ain't the greatest catch. It's a great catch, but the greatest. But in New York, that shit multiply York, that New time York, fifty. Dallas Monday night prime time. Oh, yeah, that Monday night. You know Monday what I'm night football. Right. And That's then I Moss won Rookie of the Year over me. Had two big games. Oh, um, in prime time. Prime yeah. time. Yeah. Against yeah. Dallas and Green yeah. Bay. Right. The, the the Green the Green Bay game wasn't the. Yeah, it was the crazy. He went crazy. He went crazy though. against yeah, Green Bay. Crazy. But, but it was two big games. But the other thing is, though, statistically, like, I had better, better. But even with Randy, though, Minnesota wasn't like he just was crazy. But Minnesota wasn't that spot where you become a star. New York, way different, though. New York is way different. It's like us now. We worked hard as hell to build this show up, and we doing it in rookie quarters. <laughs> hey, hey, man, it's way nicer than we was at as rookies. Hey, this is, we, we in minicamp. Nice, nice. Hey, shoot, we in minicamp. G got Pedialyte and you got your electrolytes a different way. <laughs> bro, you don't have it that got electrolytes in it, you know. But no, nah, you a young man, bro. You, you keep with the Pedialyte. You keep with the Pedialyte. I'm going to keep with the happy dad. I like it. Yeah, yeah. Because this, this, the, this, this, the, this the real deal here. But we'll let you grow up a little bit. Get you a couple I'm gonna work to that. I'm gonna yeah. work to that. Hey, let's get to it. Hold up. Limitless. Take a stomach cow pinning it. I thought they here to witness it. Got my people feeling militant. Way I'm feeling, get me up. On the mission, get me up. Knowing me, I got the key. On this vision, I can trust. Trust. Limitless. Take a stomach cow pinning it. I thought they here to witness it. Got my people feeling militant. Way I'm feeling, get me up. On the mission, get me up. Hey, man, we got, we got Garrett Wilson, obviously the OG. Freddie T, my dog Chan, um, bro. I think for us, like, it's just dope to have a young cat on the show. And I asked you even before we start, I was like, have you have you tapped in? You know, have you watched some of the show? So give us your critique, man. There's four old dudes. I mean, three old dudes <laughs> that 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 can't do it no more, man. How we doing with the pot? Nah, I mean, it's 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 awesome to watch. So. Um... I grew up watching all y'all. Let me just start by saying that. Like, I, I love I love ball. I've always been a student of the game. So so to see y'all on the other side of that and still, you know, being being someone that I tap into and, and you know, make sure I, I watch the newest episode, you know, that's that's what it's all about. That's what I want to, you know, be at and, and when my time comes, you know. So, um, yeah, that's that's what I say on that. I love it, man. So we were, you know, we're driving over, and I'm, I'm telling them stories about you because I've known you since 17, 18, you know, that we'll get to. And the first thing Chan does, man, is is, is look at your your outfit, right? <laughs> you a little different, huh? From the draft, from the yeah, draft. your draft outfit, bro. What was you the with it? Nah, <laughs> I ain't gonna fake it. That was the plan, though. It yeah. was. Yeah, I want to be. I'm a country dude, man. Yeah. Like you know, what I'm saying we just wear jeans and, and t-shirts. Oh, yeah. So I got you. You you you're an, is it called eccentric? Yeah, eccentric. Eccentric. I don't like, know what that means. That's like the 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 the, the weirdo shit. Is what I call it. You, you like that weird shit, like you? Nah, like you know, it's just kind of having your own swag, and that's that's how I looked at it. So you know, I didn't want to just you know kind of go up there and do the thing and go through the motion, you know, not look back on it. I wanted to be able to look back and be like, you know, I feel like I stepped that day, and you know, have conversations <laughs> like this. You know, if if you put on if I put on a black tuxedo, we're not even talking about this. You know, it's just yeah. another suit. So. You know, I like the conversation. It's cool. I can, I can um, vouch for you know why I wore what I wore. I feel, I feel confident in doing that for real. So, I, I felt confident in it. You know? and, be, and being as young as you are, you think about that, like, cause we didn't, we never. I don't know. I can't speak for them, but we never thought about like the, I'm gonna be on TV. I need to have that approach. I need to have this. Like we, I was just all ball. Like, let me go and prove myself on the field. But the world is changing. Y'all young boys think about that, like yeah. the, the optics of what you're doing and knowing the cameras in front of you. Exactly. I mean, it can only open up, you know, more opportunities or, or take them away. So, um, you know, you, you got to go about it the right way and, and um, you know, everything, everyone's looking at everything, you know, you under the microscope and then draft day, you know, you thinking about that's a dream day for me. I mean, I've been thinking about that day for forever and to get the invite and, and um, you know, be able to have two dudes that I play ball with too. You know, we all had talked about that thing for, six months, you know, what we was finna wear, and we all not telling each other, you know, trying to hint at stuff, you know, that type of thing. So, like, we all wanted to have something special. That's, that's you know, did, I just, did that's you, uh, Did you ever think about not going? I ain't gonna fake it. Yeah, I did. I did, just because that's not, that's not me. I'm more of a low-key, stay-at-home type of dude. And, um, 
my agent actually convinced me to bring the family out there and have this once of a lifetime opportunity, you know? So I heard that and I was like, you right, you right, I'm tripping. You know, staying with the draft, 10th uh, <clears throat> tenth overall pick. Um, the Jets hadn't picked a, a receiver since 2001 in the first round. They hadn't picked since Saint, uh, Santana Moss. Yeah. So they took a shot on you. But that's not the point I'm going to make. You say, you know, you're low key, you're chill. Your pop said uh, in the, the video that he sent to you on draft day, seek respect, not popularity. Yeah. Uh, respect will set you apart from everybody. What's the mindset when, you, when he tells you that? Yeah, it's, um, it, it's, it's not always do what's, do what's cool, do what's do what everyone else is doing. And, um, you know, that's how I was raised. That's how I was raised. You know, you, you, you make your own decisions. You think about things your own way and, and um, you know, decide how you want to go about it after that. You know, it's not just go with the flow. So, um, you know, my pops has a, a huge impact on me growing up. And just that's, that's one of the things he said. But I mean, it's a million things that he had, you know, raised me on and, um, you know, that I try to apply every day for sure. He also said, see greatness and not wealth. It's hard when you're about to get a $20 million bag. Right. I mean, you, know, you got to say, hey, Pops, can I, can I reverse the order? <laughs> I mean, but to, to really be in your, in your space yeah. and to come in here and, to, you know, to hear you as we were walking here and to see the pity of light, you know, before the seasons even started. And RC was kidding. We ain't even in training camp yet. But you're doing the right mm -hmm. things mm -hmm. to put yourself in position to seek greatness, right? It starts somewhere. Yeah. And as a young guy, I think that you're right on course, but have you always been that way? Um, you know, I, I haven't always been this way. You know, it's, it's, it's um, something you got to work towards. You know, you got to wake up and, and fight, fight the battle that, you know, to fall and do things that, you know, ain't, ain't helping you get to that end goal. I go through that, that every day. Like, that's, that's, that that stuff don't change, you know what I mean? Like, um, it's, it's always a battle with yourself, and that's the hardest battle you can be in, you know? So you got to... You got to push yourself to different different things, and having people like my pops to putting in my head since I was a young dude, you know that stuff helps. You know I'm, you I'm thankful to have exactly because exactly. he's done it. He's exactly. a great basketball player. He's a successful player. player. Right. He's a successful man, and um, you know that's my role model. Like I said, so you know I have someone like that in my ear. It makes it easier on me. You know it's it's not always like that for everybody. You know we've done this show and talked to a lot of people about upbringing, about their about their background, and how those things have affected who they became. The crazy part is, is man, you know, you've accomplished some things, but this is truly just the beginning of your real career. This is the first time that, yeah, the things that pops have given me and I've, and I've grown to learn and understand, now I got to I have to apply them as a man. And you think about now being in New York, the, the microscope being on you, having a quarterback that was picked number two the year before. How do you feel about leaving Ohio State, kind of being away from the regimen of we're going to take care of you. You have to do this. Now we give you 20 million and you have to produce. Is there any fear for you there in taking that next step and having those type of eyes, that type of New York back page critique on you every single game? Yeah, I mean, that's real. Everything you say is real. And, um, being in New York, like I didn't, I didn't realize we we do these little little like education events before we go talk to the media every time. I'm like, why are we doing this? Just stuff like that. Like they said, they're basically trying to drill you. They're basically trying to get get something out of you every time. And I'm sure that's the case with every market, but it's just a little a little you know step up when it comes to to tabloids and stuff like that is what they always preach. And so, I mean, it, it's really real, but it's never really been about that for me. You know, I, I love playing ball and and. Um, you know, you say you, you was just focused on ball. Like, that's, that's what it's yeah. always been for me. I love fashion and stuff like that, but, like, those, that's never really been, like, anything. You know, it's always been just playing ball and all this stuff that comes with it. You know, do, do what you have to do to be able to play, you know, whether it's, it's school, you know, all this stuff. You know, that's, that's kind of how I approach, any, approach everything, and, you know, maybe to a fault. So, you know, I, I feel like if I keep that mindset throughout it, you know, I'm going to be straight, you know, just ball. And that's what it comes down to. Everything good comes with playing well, you know, you never seen no, you know, bench, bench player get all the deals, you know, yeah. you know, I mean, greatness, greatness does bring wealth, you know, my, back to that. And, um, yeah, that's the mindset I'm gonna just try and keep throughout this thing. You're blessed because you got your pops that's, that's been through it, you know what I'm saying, that's been there. But, bro, I don't want to jinx you. You're gonna drop a pass and they're gonna tear your ass up. <laughs> on me. 
You know what yeah. I'm saying? Like, real talk. Yeah. You know what they say? What, what the young kids say? No cap. No cap. <laughs> <laughs> no, hey, hey, Chan, no kizzy. No, no, no kizzy. I ain't gonna say it, yeah. You were born in 2000? <laughs> yeah, 2000. That's crazy to me. <laughs> no kizzy. They're gonna tear your ass up if you lose a game for them. You know what I'm saying? Like, are you ready as a young guy to, to, to get past that, get past the criticism? You go to eat, you, bro, you go to eat, and people light your ass up at the restaurant. I dealt with it in Miami, where I'm out there drinking a beer, and they're like, you can't win a game, but you're gonna drink a beer. And I'm like, I know who gonna win this fight. <laughs> but that was my approach. You can't oh, do that. Yeah. No kissing. Oh, you can't do that. <laughs> but are, are, you, are you ready for the, the positivity, the money? Freddie just said it. Bro. What, what Cam it. said. It's the gift and the curse. We just had Cam Newton on. He said it's a gift and the curse. New York is definitely that. Yeah. The gift, there's gonna be so many opportunities, but the curse of being a first round pick, 10th yeah. overall, and they want you to change a franchise. Are you ready for that? I don't think you can really, you know, be ready for that. Just like, just like say you're ready for that. You know, when it comes down to, I'm playing ball and, and, and that's what I've done since I was five, five, six years old. So I'm gonna do my job and I'm gonna do it at a high level because that's what I always done and that's kind of how I feel about it. And um, you know, I feel like if I do that, the rest of you know, this stuff gonna take care of itself. You know, we got some 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 dudes that some young dudes that's ready to, you know, see the see the um the organization change around and, and see us, you know, get some wins. And you know, we all trying to take that same mindset, but like, man, it's it's hard to get ready for that. I can't lie, like I don't know how I'm gonna react if, if someone come up and try and you know, while I'm at dinner or something, I don't know how I'm gonna react. You know, I'm, I'm the biggest crit critique of myself, and uh, it's gonna come with it. Best way to react or respond to it is simply just keeping the main thing the main thing. You was drafted to come here and play ball. You know, and, and whatever comes of that, you make the most of it. There are gonna be times when you have great days. You know, there'll be times where, like Chance said, you might drop a pass or two. You know, and you've been there, you, Ohio State. You played on the highest level, one of the highest levels in college, next to the SEC. What? I I do, I... <laughs> you got three of them here, though. You got three of them here, G. Oh, <laughs> that's, that's, that's Big Ten, Freddie. That's Big Ten. No, but this is the point I want to make, too. The level of competition is great, but not so. Big Ten isn't not necessarily known for its speed. You're right, though. Yeah. And when you line up in the NFL, the skill position on the other side of the field, everybody is fast. Every single play, and you have to be ready each and every single play. Those matchups don't change. It's about consistency. Not what he asked you about off the field. I want to get in your head and, and see where your, your heart is, too, to see if you're ready for that. Yeah. You feel me? Because that's going to set you apart. Yeah, I mean, I, I feel like I've always done a good job of, um, you say, keeping the main thing the main thing. And, yeah. and, and, you know, being able to bounce back from, from, you know, messing up on the play or something, you know, making dropping the pass. like. I didn't drop the pass. I didn't been grilled for dropping the pass at O State. You know, like I remember muffing the punt my freshman year. <laughs> I wasn't even on the. You know, I'm not. I'm like a good player, but I'm not like one of the dudes they really looking out for. I'd muff a punt. They against team up north. They frying me and and on Twitter. I was looking at Twitter back then. Like I was like, I can't be doing this no more. You know, but but in the game, I'm. You know, you got to make the next play. That's gonna make them forget about the past play. Like I love playing. Like I said, it's always make the next play. You know, I'm, I'm, I know I'm gonna mess up. I'm gonna mess up. And like you said, it, this this talent level. I mean, the last two three weeks for me, seeing the, these dudes on the other side of the ball and, and playing with me. I mean, it's different. It's definitely different. You know, and it's it's not the Big Ten no more for sure. <laughs> and um, it's gonna take a little little bit getting used to, but. But you know, I feel like what's the what, what drives me and what what I'm about. Like I'm I'm gonna get through this for real. Yeah. And you can cuss on this show too. It's cool. Oh, I saw you. yeah, I saw you, I saw you like yeah, I saw you holding. Now you can cuss. You know, so it's crazy, man. You know, uh, and I told the story on um, on ESPN. Uh, it's it's high school. It's the opening, right? Obviously, I'm the greatest. I'm the greatest defensive coordinator that's ever coached seven on seven. Facts, it's it's not even close. I'm simply amazing. Right, they gave me a cheat well, team. What do you call cover four, cover three? I, I, I don't know, know. we frying. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, so Chad, so Chad, and on the team, I had Kyle Hamilton that just went to Baltimore. Derek Stingley that went to Houston was my corner. I had Jordan, y'all met my son, so we got a squad defensively. Man, he run a dig, we in cover two. Kyle Hamilton, 6'4", right? He's like 10 yards behind G. So he throw the ball, 
And man, you know how Iron Man, when he start, when he start to take off, he shoot the little jets out his yeah. hand like that. So he didn't shot the jets out his hand. Stingley looking up at him like this. You know, Jordan able 5'10, he doing this. <laughs> and Kyle is 10 yards behind him at 6'4, jumping. Cause that's how high the ball is. And it's the greatest nine catch I've ever seen. Cause it was so high, he could just get his fingertips on it. But I remember watching him then, and he wasn't quote unquote the number one receiver in the country at the time. Yeah. And he was quiet, and I remember seeing that, and I was like, this kid's freaking phenomenal. Like, he's gonna be amazing. And then I saw that, and then I started to look at the wide receiver room at O State, though, right? Jamison Williams is, is maybe the first rock wide receiver picked this year if he doesn't get hurt, and he left to go play at Alabama because y'all had so much talent in that room. Brian Hartline, probably the best wide receiver coach in college football. How did that competition, just in that room, yeah alone. One, how did you handle it, being a very good player, having to wait your turn to be the guy, and also how has that prepared you for the now? I came in early, so so I was I was 18, just turned 18, and my pops didn't think I was ready to go early, and he, he was probably right, for real. So, you know, I went up there, and that was probably that first six months before J-Mo had came in uh, was the hardest six months of my life to that point. You know, I'm just going through it, getting, getting in trouble. Like, I'm not touching the line and on the thing and thinking, like, no, you know, I'm thinking I'm doing good winning the sprint, but I ain't, they ain't mad at me because I ain't touched the line. You know, things like that, and I ain't really get it yet. You know, I ain't really realized the process that it's not just the outcome, it's the process that got you there as well, you know, and I didn't, I didn't fully buy into that. It took some time, you know, and, um, you know, I think that hurt me. We had some great, you know, great receivers, older dudes at that time when I got there my freshman year, Chris Olave had just bought his uh, his freshman year. And I, I wanted to do that role, and I, but I wanted to kind of start, though. I wanted to be a starting player. I felt like I was good enough, but, and I was good enough, for real. I mean, if you ask anyone there, they'll tell you I was good enough, but it was just everything else. And um, I didn't kind of, I wasn't bought in. I, I, didn't, I didn't really get it yet. And, um, but you know, that I, guys like KJ Hill, Ben Victor, and um, you know, they, they, they had me grow up real fast. I ain't gonna lie, they kind of, Got me right, and Coach Hardline as well. So, um, it's, it's it's a great room there. Is what I'll say. Like it's it's probably the best room that you can ask for because it's so many. It's so everyone's different. Like we got to do like Marvin Harrison Jr. who comes in and, and he changes the whole room. But we already a great room. Marvin Harrison come in the room. Nobody, no freshman come in and he changed my whole mindset on how I'm how I'm gonna go to work every day, how I'm gonna go practice, and wow. what I'm gonna spend, how I'm gonna spend my time when I'm outside the facility, back in the facility. You know, he changed. My whole perspective on that, you got dudes like that coming in. And then Mecca Buka come through the room and do 20, 20 reps of the bench press the first day. Like, I couldn't even do 225 one time. Like, you know, it's just a different room. So J-Mo came in. He was from St. Louis. That's my best friend for life. He my roommate. And we was mad. Every day we wasn't starting. Like, every day. <laughs> and uh, when our time came, we just was, like, trying to ball. And um, Chris was always there. I mean, it was just a family, man. It's special with what they got going on there. And I'll say this to Jackson Smith, he, he the best one, for real. Like, I'm, he the truth. He the truth, man. So I can't wait to see what he's going to do this that's, next that's year. That's pretty cool. And it'll prepare you for, the, for this level as well. Uh, but you're coming to a, a level where you have veterans, grown men, that are taking care and putting food on their table. And they're making tons of money. And they're threatened by the young guys. So the competition is going to elevate. They're going to be OK in the room when they know you earn their respect. But initially, they're going to be a bit timid because they don't know you. They don't know anything about you. You're in rookie minicamp. Have there been any, any veteran guys that have you know, welcomed you with open arms and you know, have spoken to you and said, hey, we're going to need you? We're, yeah. we're going to need you more than anything? All of them, for real. So I mean. We like the Jet, we they haven't won, you know, that's just kind of how it is. And and um, we had three first round draft picks, and and you know, we we kind of we were expecting them, you know, coming in and play, make, make an impact, and that's that's the vibe around the facility. And and you know, the dudes, the dudes expect that too. And um, you know, I got some great dudes in the room, like like Elijah Moore, he's not even a vet, he's been there just this past year, but he, I mean, he didn't show me, you know, everything so far. Braxton Berrios, Jeff Smith. Um, just some good, good receiver dudes that are in the room with me, older dudes, and then Miles Austin, my, my receiver coach. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I'm, I spend seven hours a day, five <laughs> hours a day with him, you know, so, um, just, just taking in everything he's saying. I mean, he, I watched him play growing up too. Right. You know, yeah, um, Dallas. Oh, yeah, yeah, Cowboys, you know, so. And I thought, I thought uh, Chan would chime in. 
Because Miles uh, had old K Kim K at one point in time. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> that was yeah. a safe way for you to hop in, man. That, that, no, that's my thing, man. I was just thinking, I wonder, um, I had to slide back to college, man, because I've never, like, this is the first time I sit down with somebody born in the 2000s. Like, that's crazy to me. Yeah. You were born in the 2000s. The transfer portal, because you were talking about, when you were talking about Ohio State, Harry, people were leaving. Your yeah. homeboy, yeah, people left. People didn't You leave. never thought about transferring. You never thought about like when you sitting there, you said y'all, y'all, y'all was you and your homeboys mad about not starting. Nowadays, when we was in school, bro, you gotta wait your turn. Yeah. Nowadays, these little motherfuckers transfer every two days. They'll go to eight schools in three weeks. Yeah, right. You ain't never thought about transferring. Nah, not for real. Like you just be throwing it out there, just like saying it, just cause you mad. Yeah. But, but uh, nah. I mean, I had an impact my freshman year, and and, and they. And I kind of did my own thing. I had I known that I was messing myself up. You know, I knew it wasn't where I was at. I was like, I could play. It's just let me get this stuff out the way so that I can just just have it be playing. You know what I mean? Once I got to that point, I mean, it was it was smooth. So that would have been my sophomore year, and that's when I you know I, I took I took off. That's just kind of how the that's kind of how it is. It, like it wasn't. You knew you was a dog. Yeah, I knew I was gonna get, be all right there for real. And I feel like most of us did, but at the time people started leaving, the room had just gotten gotten deep, it gotten really deep. And um, that was kind of the decision there. But everyone that was there could could have played there and made an impact and been a great player on the team. I mean, you see that, you know. You, and then so, the NIL. Yeah, oh yeah. Hey, they need, I'm gonna tell you, they, they coach said they need 13 M's. Mi 13 million dollars? Thir they need 13 million dollars at Ohio State to keep the roster together. That mean they need, they need a general. Ryan Day said that? Ryan Day said they need. 13 million to keep the team together. Damn, bro. You about to came out too early. <laughs> Goodness gracious. I missed that. I ain't, I ain't know that. You ain't, get, you ain't getting that. You, you got no, some no, no. Right we got right. We got right for sure. But I, I mean, it was what you made, what you wanted it to be at that point. So, um, you know, I had teammates that was going out doing all the deals that made, you know, six figures on doing it just in the season. And we, we got it July. I think it started July 1st, 2021. And then um, we decided for the end of that season, so or for that season. And um, I mean, I made some good money on it, but I was kind of chilling. I just didn't want to be out the house. You know, you gotta, it's, you know, you gotta go do stuff for it. It's not like they just giving you the money. You gotta yeah. go show face at, a, at an event and stuff like that. So during the season, I just wasn't really trying to do that. But I'll say it, you could have done whatever you wanted with it, like for real. At least at a place like Ohio State, where if you're playing good ball, and you wanted the players on the team, you could you could have ran with that all the way. But bro, I, I was gonna say because it, there's a lot of like there's a lot of negativity that comes from the NIL stuff, mm -hmm. because you're a part of it. We bro, if we if we took 18 cents, we were gonna get suspended. Oh, right. But like now you can take bread. Did you see? Wait, did, so you ain't never you ain't never getting no money? What's the statute of limitations? <laughs> <laughs> Is it far enough out? <laughs> hey. I wasn't struggling at Florida. <laughs> but, hey, wait, who was your strength coach at Florida? Freddie T, Rob Glass. Ah, uh, I... Yeah, Rob Glass. Freddie that came out and said he took 50 racks to... Nah, I didn't get anything Fred, at Florida. Fred, no, 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 we you said... We're show rolling. But no, Freddie, you <laughs> no, already no, said no, that you no. took 50 racks from somebody. Yeah, we crossed, we crossed over in a bit, but... Yeah, that was, that, it wasn't Florida. It Florida didn't team. get the money, yeah. No, nah, but we're not gonna talk about. But that. no, but Fred, I gotta, have, I had to finish though. Did you see? Because that's the thing that I, would, I would be like, that people, the, the fear of people with this nil stuff is that kids are gonna change and all this stuff, and we, we, we weren't a part of it. Do you think that the nil being a part of it, seeing dudes getting checks, seeing dudes getting six figures, do you think it can be a problem with seeing guys? You knew guys before they had money, and now they get six figures. Do you, do you think the nil? Could 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 be a problem with you being that close to it. I think I think it definitely could be a problem, but it, I think not having them getting paid was a, was a bigger problem, you know. Yeah. It's, it definitely can be a problem. I mean, you, I've seen all the stuff going on, and yeah. I keep track of college ball, and you know, it's going to change the landscape. But uh, at the end of the day, I mean, they're gonna watch. They're gonna watch the games, you know, and and. and we love playing, and the game's gonna be entertaining. I mean, it's it's gonna be good ball, and you know what's wrong with with bro getting a check for 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 his jersey? You know, like it's it's, just, it's really just that simple. Like it's, it makes sense to me, and and um, 
you know, being at a place like Ohio State and seeing for two years without NIL and seeing what it was like, like, it's a lot of money to be made. So it's, it's only right that they got to this point, in my opinion. And, um, you know, what comes with it is what comes with it. But, you know, great, great teams like Bama and, and, and you know, they're going to figure it out. They're going to figure it out. Oh, they, oh yeah. they, they are figuring it out, bro. They are not tripping. They, yeah, they are not I, I don't worry out. about the smaller schools. That's one thing I will say. I worry about the smaller schools. You know, my brothers, my brothers played at um, Ohio University and Bowling Green. And I remember when he told me, whenever it was kind of happening, I didn't really think about it from this point of view. But he was like, I don't know what Bowling Green going to do. You know, when they try to get a dude, like, you know, how they going to recruit unless the dude is his only option, you know, stuff like that. And I was like, that's a good, that's a good point. Um, but I mean, besides that, though, you know, I'm, I'm with it 100 percent. Yeah, I think I think that boys should get paid for sure. Um, speaking of getting paid, you know, we kind of hinted at the fact that, you know, you and I'll have 20 million guaranteed. Oh. You were I know that's crazy. You were specifically brought here to help the development of Zach Wilson. Period, point blank. He, he has the looks, he's got the blonde hair, the pretty smile, he has the pedigree, the huge family. But in New York, it's about how many passes you can complete and win football games. In your short time of being able to, to work with him and be around him, how have y'all worked on developing a rapport so you aren't talked about as a guy who hasn't produced like a receiver that was picked 10th overall? Yeah, I mean, Zach was one of the first dudes to text me. So just starting there, like, when I got drafted, I missed the text initially. So so I had went around saying, I was like, oh, yeah, Zach ain't text me yet. <laughs> that first night, I was like, let me go check back. Went back and look. He had texted me, like, probably 10 minutes after I got drafted. So I folded that day. So I was like, we off to a slow start. So I was like, he probably mad. At, you know, not mad, but, like, thinking, like, why he saying I ain't texting him? I for sure texting him. So I was like, whenever I got in, I was like, I got to hit him, let him know that I missed this and all. But uh, we ended up going throwing, actually, when I got back. I got back in, and that was probably the first step, man. Like just being, you know, getting getting with each other, seeing how he would operate, and seeing how he how he likes to put work in. You know, when when coaches ain't around, when coaches ain't telling them what to what to do in the drill, and um, you know, I like the way he works, and then just the the, the attitude that he brings every day. It's it's uh, he 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 stays like always the same person. You never get in a different Zach, and uh, I think that's big when you're talking about a QB. You know, QBs got got to carry themselves differently, and um. He's got all that, you know. I've seen some good quarterbacks in college ball and, and, and seen how they went through that transition of how they got to carry themselves and stuff like that, and, and he's got that, you know. He went through that transition, and now, you know, it's just, like you said, winning games. And I mean, we, we, we're going to build our connection. We're going to keep building it, and that's what, you know, we, we love playing. We love going out there and working with each other and stuff like that. So that's going to come, like, we're going to do that regardless. It's just how can, we, how can we make the team, but how can we win games as soon as possible? Because that's at the end of the day, that's what really matters, you know? you know? We keep talking about New York, New York, New York, and what New York is. And you said something earlier that really caught my attention. You talked about NIL deals, and you said, I like to stay inside. You know, I was going to bring that up. Yeah, you, you I was it. certainly going to bring that up, simply because I played in a market where I had tons of opportunity. But instead of taking advantage of those opportunities, uh, not necessarily being lazy, I wanted to be somewhere else. You know, when Nike had an opportunity for me, uh, I blew off the, the, the photo shoot, whomever it might have been, so I can go and party in Miami. And later on, it bit me in the butt because, I put, like, again, I played in a market that didn't have the marketability in Jacksonville, but I needed that extra exposure that would have helped me even today when we talk about Pro Bowls or the lack of Hall of Fame pushes mm -hmm. and everything. So in terms of relationships, that's the way I started looking at it making sure you show up, and it goes back to keeping the main thing the main thing. So you're going to have to be able to balance football and taking advantage of those opportunities being a top 10 pick. I went ninth. Those opportunities are going to come. They're coming now, I'm sure. You know, so again, with what Ryan brought up, what you caught and what I caught, it's going to be challenging. Yeah. Because you're going to have those days when you just don't feel like it. What are you going to do? Because the team is going to pull you this way. The, the sponsors are going to pull you this way. You're going to be focused on playing. You might not have a good game, right? You might have a great game and want to go versus not having a good game and saying, you know what? I'm, I'm, I'm banged up today. I got treatment or I got this or whatever it might be. I'm not going to show up, but they're depending on you to show up. Yeah. What are you going to do? Yeah, I mean, if you make a commitment, you, you got to show up. But... You know, uh, when it comes to the season, I'm, I'm, I'm going to make sure that I'm not 
making commitments that um, is going to interfere with anything, you know, because I know how I get during the season, and it's tunnel vision. It's tunnel vision. It's not, it's not really no time for none of that, you know. And, and at the end of the day, I said this earlier, you know, when you're playing good ball, that, that stuff's going to take care of itself, you know. So, so I just want to make sure I'm putting my best forward every Sunday, make sure I'm getting better throughout the week. And then, you know, when the, when the time comes, the end of the season, and, you know, some brands want to hit me up, making sure that I'm getting on all those opportunities. But, I mean, yeah, I'm inside during the season. That's, that's how I've always been, for real. And that's, um, I, don't, I mean, I don't see that changing. I got the puppy and all that. I'll be chilling. G, 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 G you, you are missing, you are missing a huge, listen, bro. You from Texas, and so you were in high school. You ain't have no money to be doing all that stuff, and yeah. your parents are around, and you got restrictions, right? And then you go to school in Columbus. Um, the only person I've ever seen have a great time in Columbus is Urban Meyer. <laughs> that's it. That's, that's the, that's the, that is the only person I ever seen really live. Man, listen, he found a hole in the wall. Where was the hole at? He, in the wall. He found a, he found, he had a great time. Right, but you 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 gonna be in New York, bro? It's a it's a, a Uber away, it's a a chauffeur away from being in that city. And we were talking a little bit about how this is the perfect storm place, right? You're a handsome dude, you're smart, you you communicate well, and you can flat out play, right? There's gonna be some not just come do this for the brand. It's gonna be come enjoy some of the spoils of who you get to be in New York. And who you get to meet. And who you get to meet, the people you get to be around, the artists. How are you going to deal with that? Does Garrett stay the same? And, and will you be able to say, you know what? Nah, during the season, I'm chilling. When this artist is hitting you up on a Monday night, you know you off on Tuesday. Hey, man, just come out here, man. I got us a table. We're going to chill and eat. Or we're going to chill and drink. Are you ready to be the same Garrett you've always been and say, nah, that's not for me during the season? Or will some of that be like, man, I work for this? I mean, it, it, it's not what I work for, though. That's the thing, though. This, this ain't it for me. And, um, you know, getting in the NFL, this is a huge step. It's a huge step. I want to be in the league. You know, it's, I want to be a great player in the league, though. And that don't just, it don't just come because you got here. So, you know, I, um, I, I do, I really mean it when I say I'm going to be in the crib. Like, that's really who I am to the core, for real. Like, they be having to drag me out the house. Like, it's, it's, um, it's really just like that for me. And I don't see myself ever changing off of that. And then when it comes to the season, yeah, that's that's different. But um, I mean, I just I just can't never see that see that changing. No, no, bro. Cause I said it to A Rod. I said it to uh, somebody else. I don't forgot. But it's hard looking good like we do. Oh my gosh, bro. You know what I'm saying, like, bro. You like, yeah, like, yeah. If I was a woman, I'd talk to you. I know if you. <laughs> If you was a woman, you talk to me. I ain't gonna no, go there. Not. Nah, I say. No, he would not. You're not that hey, handsome. Hey, it's us right now. It's hard looking good like us. <laughs> you talking about it's us right you now? Going, yeah, it's just us right now. <laughs> Come like, on, it's, man. Hard, it's hard walking out into the world looking like us, man. It, now they know. That's you why got, I don't bro, do it. What you mean? <laughs> I'm playing. G, I'm playing. G, and it's fun. It, it, but honestly, everybody's gonna know you got bread. Everybody's gonna know your contract. The internet is stupid right now. And then now we look as good as we look, like, so it's going to come. How you, how, how are you, psh, psh, how are you, how are you going, do you have yeah. a plan to defer it? Because, bro, it ain't easy. Yeah. Like, all day, I was at the gas station earlier buying, buying uh, some water and sweet tea. And the lady was like, hey, and I'm like, I'm fine, I'm fine, <laughs> I'm in a rush. How you going to deal with it? I don't think that's going to happen for real. You you on some other no nah, that's some other shit I ain't gonna fake you on some other shit like that ain't gonna happen to me if I get to that level I I just probably fold for real <laughs> <laughs> I'm saying come on bro you got it like that you got it like that bro I will play I play <laughs> uh I mean like the easiest way this is probably why I actually ended up being home all the time is the easiest way is to just not show face for real. Like, I don't know. That's that's a good question, though. Like, how am I really going, when I'm faced with it, like, how am I going to defer it? Um, I can't say I really know yet. You know, I, I ain't put myself out there enough to know how, how I rea react to that or how I respond to that. But, you know, I, I think I'm going to stand tall on my, you know, what I believe in. And, you know, it's e like I said, it's, it's easy. It's just not show faith. I don't ever put my, you know, go out there. It's, it's going to be easier. Um, I call them sugar foot. 
So they'd be like, hey, and I'd be like, hey, sugar uh, foot, look at you. <laughs> I'm going to give that to you. Uh, You're welcome. That's, you said that's going to work to keep them... Got to keep them away because they're like, why okay. did he just call me sugar foot? Oh, God. You know, like, it's, it's a weird little thing to call somebody sugar foot. That's all like you want to... That's all like you want to suck toes. I'm going to bless that to you. I suck a toe. <laughs> oh, you wild. Gee, you don't suck, you don't suck <laughs> no toes? You don't suck no toes? Come on, bro. But straight out of the shower. See, this is when I got to jump in and, and pivot the conversation. You feel me? Because he gets loose. Um, but, man, I, I, just going back again, though, uh, your dad, I think he's amazing. And the message that he, um, you know, the video he made for you, I just, just love it, right? Because he's setting you up. And, and specifically, there, were, there, were, there was another line in there he, he said, choose good friends. Choose your friends wisely. One and one truth teller, because one truth teller is worth 50 yes men. Mm -hmm. That's my favorite, my favorite You don't know too. how you're going to say no. It's easy to say no to the women that are out there chasing you, because you know it comes with a lot of BS a lot of times, right? Especially how they look at you. Yeah. But it's harder to say no to family and friends mm -hmm. yeah. and, and, and the people that are going to be yes men that want to come in your pocket. I mean, we all asking these questions, are you ready? Because you're a rookie. We're trying to look out for you. That's going to be the hardest thing. Yeah, and how to deal with that, too, Freddie C. Yeah. yeah. You got to be ready. I'm just saying you got to. You don't have to answer it. Yeah. I just want you to know you have to be ready. I mean, I got to ask y'all, though, how'd y'all like, go about it's that? Hard. Cause it, I mean that's it's that's hard. that's the main thing I worry about. And you don't want to, you know. Like everything else, repetition. Yeah. Because you you love your mother, yeah. you love your grandmother, your father, your your auntie, people that was there for you, yeah. and naturally you feel like they've done things for you and they help you get to this point. So uh, you know it's a nice little token of appreciation or two here or there. That's okay, right? You yeah. might set them up, you yeah. know, a, a fund or, or anything, but two times, three times. Now it's, become, it's turning into greed. You know, you can set them up initially, but then after, after a certain amount of time, you have to just say, you know what, no. It, it's as simple as that, you know? Because if you're not, you're gonna be one of those guys that everybody's reading about when you're done playing. If you don't wanna be that guy, you'll learn how to say no. I think the other thing is too, is when you do surround yourself self with good people, good people say no for you. Right? Uh, they, they say no to themselves first, right? Because they care about you above themselves. And they also help you say no to other people. I think, you know, the one thing I would want to tell you is the, the thing I've loved about you is a couple of times we've asked you, we've asked you questions and you said, I don't know how I'll react. And that's true because you haven't been through it. You believe you will be prepared for it. And sometimes, bro, we just aren't. But I think the, the big thing that I love, especially with Freddie's telling you about the information or the things your father has told you, is also, too, man, like, you're going to make mistakes, dog. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, like you're going you're gonna to do some things, and you're going to have to learn from those things. Like, we don't sit up here and talk about, like, all the good things we've done, and that's how we've learned. We yeah. learn from effing it up. Yeah. You know, and sometimes you will, too, but you need to have people around you who have effed it up or messed it up that said, I'm not going to let you go through it. And that's whether it's in your locker room, that's whether it's people you grew up with, your, you know, your father, whoever you feel close to, find somebody that you can say, you know what, man, like, I don't get this. How did you deal with this? How should I deal with this? And talk to those people, man, and know, and know this, bro. You cannot fill up somebody else's cup if your cup is empty, period. There ain't nothing left. Yeah. I'll tell you this, and I do it the simplest way. I got a buffer between everything. So when people ask me for money, I have Johnny Williams, my attorney, and Alex Alexis, my financial guy. So they ask me money, and when you're sitting there and they're talking about this great plan, I have a big gym I'm going to open and this great <laughs> restaurant chain and all. And I'll be like, man, it sounds good. Yeah, we're going to sell chicken wings. Yeah, 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 I love chicken wings, whatever. <laughs> and I'll be like, OK, well, call Johnny and Alex. And if they approve it, I'm in. And 90% of the deals never even, they never even call the people because that, that intimidates them. Exactly. So my out was having, always having a buffer, always having somebody that you have to call. If you want to get in my pocket, there's a, there's a number you have to call to get in my pocket. And it, it worked wonders for me yeah. because at 10 people that, that presented business deals to me, nine of them would never call an attorney or a financial guy Correct. because they, they know they can't trick them. <laughs> They, they think they're going to trick the dumb athlete. 
No, you ain't gonna trick me. Yeah, yeah, sounds good. Sound, and, and I'm the nicest guy in the world. Buy him a beer. Sounds good. Sounds good. Sounds good. Yeah. Call Alex. Call Johnny. Nine out of nine out of ten people would never hear. Yeah, from that's him. true. My and, and really my last thing in terms of uh, you know, gems, right? Don't be afraid of ownership. You know, we've always we started playing ball, and it was us versus them, the other team. And when you get into the NFL, because it's a business and money is involved, it's going to be us versus them. Us, the players, versus the front office. Don't have that mindset, right? Because these guys are billionaires. Learn to develop a relationship with the owner. You know, hey, pick their brains. How did you get here? How did you start out? Because they, wanted, they, they drafted you for a reason. They value you as a player. Teach them how to value you as a person by learning to communicate. Go and spend some time with them in the front office. Don't let the vets that are in the, in the building, the sour vets that didn't get that opportunity or think that the team is doing them wrong, don't listen to them. You know what I mean? Form your own opinion, you know, as you, through your experiences. And it will take you a long way. But make sure you spend some, some time with the people that's cutting the check. Trust me, it'll take you a long way. What relationships do you have in your life right now that are going to make the transition as Garrett makes the transition. Who comes from, who comes with college Garrett to professional wide receiver for the New York Jets Garrett? Everybody can't go. Everybody can't go. I mean, yeah, I mean, it's, it's mom, pops, sis, you know, the intermediate family and, and um, I mean, we had we had a big family, but you know, it wasn't it wasn't like you they weren't with you shooting in the gym. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. I mean, that's a that's the best way I could have put it right there. You know, so um, I mean, yeah, it's my it's my immediate family. Um, that's, I mean, that's that's it for real. You know, I, I say that I'm alone, and like I really mean that I'm alone. I say that like I'll be chilling. So you know, I got some friends from school and stuff like that. Like it's, but. Um, I mean, it's the family. You got an old lady? I do. I got a girl, too. <laughs> How is that going to work? Yeah. Uh, I'm just asking you, yeah, man. Yeah, I mean, I, yeah, so we've we we we've been talking for like two years, and then we've been dating for a year and a half. So, and then she a year younger than me, so she got two years of school left. So, you know, I'm, I'm, the way I'm looking at it, we get through this, we get through anything, you know, that's going to be... Yeah. Gonna so you're going to be up here, so you're going to be up here by yourself. Yeah, I'm going to be up here by myself. She's going to be down at school by herself. Oh, that shit sound cute. <laughs> <laughs> he is the devil, man. <laughs> this dude, I'm no, telling man. you, nah, he's a realist. I'm a, I'm a realist, bro. Yeah. Like, I, I, I had me a little high school, college girlfriend, high school girlfriend, couple college girlfriends. Couple. But then when I when, when I did get drafted, I had a lady. Bro, it it your life now is about to go to a different level. It's it's about to go crazy. You're about to be the the Jets, the face of a Jet organization, and you had to be ready for that. Like as an OG, we sitting down with a rookie, and that's it's so cool to me like to, yeah. to sit with a young guy and tell him, bro, we were all you 75 years ago. I was 20 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> Why you cold like that? But look, yo, look, let me well, say this, well, though. Well, so. well it, 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 the, the, these challenges yeah. are there, and that's why I've asked, we, we've interviewed other young guys, and I always ask them, like, bruh, this is a different world you're about to step into, and you're bringing a woman with you. Yeah. Um, I mean, like I said, we, we've been dating, so we've been talking two years, dating a year and a half, so... It's not a super long time, you know? It's not, it's not a super long time, if I'm being real, but um, just, the, just the, the way we are with each other, I feel like, you know, it's... It's, it's, it's genuine. It's genuine. It's not about, you know, I, and I feel that way. And um, like I said, you know, I feel like after these two years, I'm, she did finishes her uh, degree at Ohio State, so she, she was a sophomore, I was a junior. She was a freshman, I was a sophomore when we met. So, yeah, I mean, it's... She she young, you know. It's gonna be it's gonna be hard. It's gonna be hard. But like this, it's not supposed. This shit ain't easy for real, you know. Yeah. I've never heard no one say they marriage easy. They you know. And you gotta love yours too. Yeah. I feel that way. And um, you know, I know she feel that way. But you know, it's always gonna be some J Cole, whatever he said, man. Like it's always gonna be some other 
cooler shit to do, other baddie mm -hmm. over there. Like, it's always gonna be that. And um, shit, you gotta love yours, man. That's I, a I, fact. Yeah. Chan all over. Chan, he's. I'm telling you, man. This, this. I just gotta tell, bro. I'm trying to school. I'm trying to school. I'm real with him. You know bro. me. I just want to know easy stuff. You know, like, <laughs> have you thought about your camp? The song you have to sing in training camp. You know no, what I'm saying? Because they gonna haze you. You gotta do donuts. You gotta make uh, these runs. You gonna have to do a lot of. You, you thought about any of that? No. I'm serious. Say hey, they. They said the dinner. They said the dinner. Uh, they did tell me about the dinner. I gotta take all the receivers to a dinner. That's gonna be cool. I'm excited for that. It's not gonna be cool. You know they gonna run that bill up? Like 75000 Oh, yeah. You, you mean like the, the, the Louis the 13th you're gonna have to buy at the restaurant? I'm, nah, we ain't, they ain't doing it for 75 k I ain't gonna fake it. Nah, That's, nah, nah. It's the they, rookie dinner. It's all of y'all. You the 10th pick of the draft, too. They know you got 20 guaranteed. Wait, what you say rookie dinner is? He thinks it. He thinks it's his decision. <laughs> <laughs> it was so cute. It was so cute. Hey, hey listen. 75. Uh, all I'm gonna say is, um, we didn't do a whole lot of rookie dinners, all the rookies. When I was in Jacksonville, we did posi by position. But when I was in New England, the entire team went out on the, on the rookies. If it's 10, 12 rookies, whatever it might be in that class. All I know is that bill come back like 50, 60,000. Yeah. Because Tom will come in there and buy a three, four, five thousand dollar bottle of wine, take one sip, put it, and say good night. <laughs> So, I mean, it's going to happen. He's going to make it hurt. It's, it's going to happen. That's crazy he pulled yeah. that. That's crazy. So you're going to have to do a whole lot of upgrades and everything, because I see the little TV back there. Yeah. That you play in the PlayStation. <laughs> that I ain't going to lie. <laughs> you ready to upgrade everything? I think I'm out of here in, like, 30 days. I got yeah. a spot, find a spot. So, I mean, you're right, though. I ain't going to upgrade, but... This, this getting the job done. That ain't leaving. That's gonna stay. That ain't getting upgraded. That's a nice little monitor. He just nice, ain't hit. Fact. Like that's why we we kill. Like we pick on y'all when y'all get on the game. I ain't gonna fake it. <laughs> y'all get on the game. We pick on y'all on these. Y'all on this TV right here. I'm on that one. Yeah. Nah, that's that's what the pros play on. Oh, the the smart. I'm messing with you. I already okay, know. He know, he know good. I, I, th this is this is my my real question. Um, it's very rare a team has three first round draft picks. They move back up and got. I think JJ late yeah. in the first round, but first pick of the of the draft for the Jets, fourth pick overall, is Sauce Gardner. Yeah, um, you've been this, this is a new age, right? So you've been I've, I've seen you do one on ones. You've had to do that, you know, camp circuit, all those things. Yeah, training camp kick off, the, the pads on, and 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 it's your turn to to, to walk out there. I'm sure Sauce is is gonna walk out there. What's that going? What's that going to be like? Yeah, for you? like because you got to go out. It's your, it's your teammate, but you got to go out there and eat. Uh, they watching right. you too. Damn right. So, you know, just the just the way Sauce carrying himself. You know, I know that he going out there. And he he not thinking he finna lose. And you know, I'm in my own way. I'm thinking the same thing too. But um, just seeing him work the past two three weeks, I ain't gonna fake it. That's gonna be like that boy a dog for real. <laughs> and he got them got them feet. He had two picks today at practice. I ain't like no cap two picks and he. And picks was hard too, like ain't no just right to him type thing, you know. So um, you know, it's gonna be a battle, but but um Sauce so the man too, like he, he really carrying himself just with that swagger and, and you know, he's trying to bring the bring bring everything up. And I like the way he go about his stuff, but you know, when we get one on ones, it's gonna be active and that's how it's supposed to be. That's how it's supposed to be. And, but bro, in the AFC East now, because I play for the Dolphins, I live in Miami, I do dolphin pregame. Like I know about the Dolphins. Sauce, he's still proving himself, bro. If you the dog that you're supposed to be, you about to see Tredavious White in Buffalo. I mean. You about to see Xavier Howard, all pro, and Byron Jones at the Dolphins, who plays zero press every single play. You ready for that? Who, who are you excited to go against? Not talking trash, you know what I'm saying? I ain't trying to get no stuff like that, but just you're in a division with some dog-ass corners. Yeah. No, I mean, when I talk to the receivers, you know, at, at the facility, they say the same, literally, we did what you just said. And um, I know Tredavious, why they say that Bill's secondary is, is like, crazy, like top notch. <laughs> yeah, they say that is top notch. Like, they don't miss on they, all the cues, all that shit. I don't know, but Tredavious White, hella handsy, yeah. like, all that, you know? So we see them twice a year. You know, you got you to gotta look forward to those, those uh, division games, you know? We, could, we play them twice a year. And uh, I feel like, I feel like, Tredavious White, Micah Hyde, Jordan Poyer. Yeah. They got Levi Wallace in there. 
Yeah, Levi, Levi is in Pittsburgh now. They drafted Kyrie Elam. Elam, yeah, yeah, yeah I remember that. Yeah. that, that Kyrie with him and, and uh, seven on seven. He was actually, he was on our, on my opening team, I think. And um, you know, just that, that that's gonna be a fun little thing. They got Josh Allen on the other side. I get to watch him play. So. Yeah. Um, you know, Bill's been a team that's been balling the last couple years. I'm, I can't wait to play down. Yeah, I know you got Pedia light to drink, food to eat, to, to get ready to work. If, if if someone comes to you or somebody asks, who and and what will Garrett Wilson be this year for the New York Jets? What would be your answer? I think I'm gonna be a be a reliable target. Target. Um, I think I'm gonna be someone that on third down you 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 see make a play. Um, and you know, when it comes to down to the to the end of the game, I think you're gonna be someone that I'm gonna be someone that you see make a play at the end of the game. And um, you know, I feel like I feel like if I you know do what I do and um, just get get right and get acclimated to what we're trying to do in the Jets organization, you know, offensive playbook wise, all that. You know, it's a lot to take in take in early. But um, you know, I'm trying to get to that point where I just feel like I'm playing again and not as much thinking. And when I get to that point, you know, I feel like. I feel like I'm gonna be playing really good ball, you know. So I can't say I'm at that point yet. I don't know where when it's gonna be, but um, when I do, I feel like you know it's gonna be back to just playing. I'm, nah. Is your hair permed? <laughs> what are you talking about? I ain't taking my head off. No, but I done seen your head. You already seen it. Like is that permed? Perm? Nah, it that, ain't that, perm. There's, there's something in there. It ain't perm. It's, it's something it. in there. Yeah, I got my, I got, you got a kid. deep curls. <laughs> That's loose, natural. Loose curls. Yeah, no, no S curl, none of that. That's that's God. This this natural. My mom's. My that's mom's Jesus. Happy. Jesus Christ yeah. gave you that hair. Yeah. Really? Yeah. <laughs> Man, you bullshit. Come on, bro. You don't want me to ask you the same, bro. Oh, my my pretty right here. I like it. It's cool. I know. You should lock up, man. It's lock cool. that pretty shit up. You should have taken four years to lock up. <laughs> and little soft ass nah, shit. Watch this ball, boy. I tell you, Jenny, you funny, hey, cuz. Gee, hey. man, I just want to say, I, I appreciate it, man. It's definitely been an a honor and a, a, and a privilege, yeah. you know, for you to allow the OGs to come in here, man, and, and chop it up with you. And uh, I'm impressed by you. Yeah. I, I, I can that. definitely say that. I think you're going to make the city proud, you're going to make your people proud. And uh, if any BS get in your way, just pivot. You know what I'm saying? And uh, if you ever need anything, man, you got three unks in here. Reach out, yeah. holler at us, we, you know, anytime. Right on. And thank, thank you this, man. I just want you to remember, the last two seasons, we've seen rookie wide receivers do amazing things. Uh, one of those receivers played in the Super Bowl in Jamar Chase. Uh, you were that type of player in college. Nothing to say, man, that you can't do it here. And I know you keep saying you don't know how you're going to react. What you do know is, man, how to put your head down and play ball. Yeah. And that junk going to take you further here than anything else. So like you said, man, we appreciate you. You know, it's an honor for me. I've been trying to get this done for, for a man, long time, man. Me, man. And so Come I appreciate on, I it, man. Yes, sir. Appreciate you <laughs> Good job, man. dog. For real. <laughs> Lord. Yes, sir. Appreciate you, my guy. Yeah. You gotta watch out for that one, man. man There's <laughs> yeah, yeah, been a lot of them in the city. We call them hecklers. Hold up. Limitless. They can send me a cap in it. I thought they hear the witness it. Got my people feeling militant. Way I'm feeling, get me up. On the mission, get me up. Knowing me, I got the key. On the vision, I can trust. Trust. Limitless. They can send me a cap in it. I thought they hear the witness it. Got my people feeling militant.